Father, I thank you for this opportunity. What a privilege it is, to, again, for you to afford me the opportunity to be your representative at this time. Now as I yield myself as the vessel that you will use during this time that we have together. Uh, with the men who have gathered here, those that have gathered around by way of streaming, uh, wherever you are in the world, if you're now here and posted up, ready to hear God's word spoken this time from missions to men, I want to thank you, Father, that you, you find me worthy enough to be your representative, to convey your word in such a manner, it adds life to the hearers. Ah, my God. Father, only because of you, how mighty you are, how awesome you are, how great you are. You know, it's, it's almost like not enough in our, in just the words that, just not enough to, to convey how grateful I am that you allow me this opportunity. Now I take authority in this environment. I take authority over any distractions from the word of God that will be conveyed to the hearers during this time. I thank you that the anointing is on the words by way of my enunciations. I think it's going to be clearly articulated and the understanding will be clear because God, you're not going to allow the, the atmosphere to be tweaked in such a way that as your words leave my mouth, that they'll be misunderstood by the time it hits the ears of the hearers. You let us know very clearly in, in Mark chapter 4. You said, let those that have ears to let them hear. It's not that we don't have ears on the side of our head. It's really, we need clarity of understanding of your word. And that comes only by way of your spirit. So now thank you for this time we have together. I praise you for it. Worship you for it. In Jesus' name. Everybody who agrees, say it. Amen. If you agree, you say it. Amen. If you agree, you say it. Amen. Thank you so much for taking this time to spend your time here with us at Missions to Men. My name is Pastor Eaton. I am the founder and pastor here. Listen, as, as I, 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 I can't even convey to you how excited I am that you would take your time to come and spend this time here with us at Missions to Men. Before I get started, I'm going to do several things before I get into the teaching. First off, I want to give you some disclaimers. The first one is that I'm not perfect, so, so don't get it twisted. And I don't know everything either. And I want you to understand this is that there's really a, a, it's really a travesty out there that, that, that some pastors or leaders, spiritual leaders, think they're beyond reproach. I'm letting you know this right now. I know I'm fallible because I'm human. Mm -hmm. Only God's word through me is what's not fallible. Now, hear me clearly when I say that. As God's spirit operates through me, what you hear from God, and God only, has to be true. Now, if I say it out of myself, it is valid. Listen, I'm telling you now, you cannot make decisions based off me telling you what to do. You, you, you will be crazy. Don't do that. I, I'm not perfect, and I don't know everything. And secondly, you don't know everything, and you're not perfect either. So we all need to find ourselves together around God's word, whereby he will reveal himself to us based off what it is we need from him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Everybody okay with that? Amen. Amen. If you're not, it don't matter. That's what I'm going to do anyway. That's just it. I'm, I, I'm in a moment this, this week, uh, and when I say a moment, those that have been around me and understand my personality, I'm a very jovial person. I like having fun. I'm always excited about God's word. I'm on fire for God's word. It's an amazing thing how good God is. Mm. And, and if you haven't experienced God, all I would ask you to do is hang on just for this next 50 minutes or so and just see how God gets to you by way of how you think. Everybody good? Good. Yeah. Everybody say, of my mind. Of my mind. In my mind. In my mind. Everybody say, of my mind. Of my mind. In my mind. In my mind. Now, this is part 36. Now, I'm going to front load something. I just, I, I thought about it before, but I'm going to front load this because some of y'all may not understand exactly what's taking place. I'm front loading what I consider to be quality to you based off what we want to offer you from Missions to Men. Church Box has partnered with Missions to Men whereby we can get you credible resources from Missions to Men directly. Some of you have asked for my study notes and things like that. And I've actually been reluctant to give you my study notes because I really think you need to go study for yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, this is me personally now. You know, I, some people say, well, no, Pastor, you know, what a benefit it will be, it will help us out, you know, because, you know, just because of the revelation that God may have given you, we didn't see it like that. Well, I know that's why he gave it to me. Amen. You got to go get your own. There you go. But 
what I like to do is just, oh, I'm front loading. I do this at the end, but I'm front loading it today. Churchbox.com actually has partnered with Mrs. The Men. What they want to help us to do is get all the resources that Mrs. The Men have available to you. And if you go out to Churchbox and sign up, every month Mrs. The Men will make sure that we give you the spiritual resources necessary to help you develop and to change your patterns of thinking to be successful. It will be directly from me directly. I'm committed to giving you my study notes, but here's the prerequisites. If I get at least a thousand people to go and sign up at Church Box and subscribe, I will give my study notes out. But I'm telling you now, less than a thousand, you can go study yourself. Mm. 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 Well, okay, all right, y'all don't like it. I guess I should have did this at the end. <laughs> But no, go to churchbox.com. We need your support. This is the way to benefit the ministry and to benefit you. Because you're important to me, I want to give you something important from me. Amen? Amen. So go to churchbox.com and just follow the instructions and log on to, with M to M. That way we know you want information from missions to men. Now, with that in mind, everybody say, of my mind. Of my mind. In my mind. In my mind. Say, of my mind. Of my mind. In my mind. In my mind. Now, this is part 36, as I just mentioned. And I'm going to be teaching on, everybody say, the will of I. The will, the will of I. Say, the will, the will, the will of, I. of I. Now, we started a little bit last week, and I want to go back and break some things down. In the environment, the environment is always waiting for an I in order to attach its will to. Amen. Amen. When God speaks, he doesn't have to identify who he is. The only reason I believe he had to give Moses who he was when he says, I am that I am, is because Moses was speaking on behalf of God. Amen. God you know, of what God has put together to attach itself to. Things don't just happen by osmosis. We like to think so. If things just happen by osmosis, the osmosis. osmosis. As much time as most of us have spent in church, we should be super saints. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Man. <laughs> 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 Say osmosis. osmosis. You know, I mean, if it really, if it really was osmosis, as much time as we all have spent in church, you know, from Shaka Zulu to Yabba Dabba Doom, <laughs> everything, we should be super saints. Amen. <laughs> Say, Pastor, Pastor. I get it. I, I get it. it. Okay, all right, all right. Say, of my mind, in my mind. mind. Say, the will, the will of I. Of so what I'm going to do this evening or during this session is I'm going to go back through my notes. We'll do a little bit of review from last week. I suggest that you go to YouTube. Go to YouTube and search and type in Missions to Men. Don't put no spaces between it. Put Missions to Men in the search. And go back and view uh, part 35 from last week. It will really bless you. I'm telling you. I mean, I listen to myself about five times a week. Amen. Not because I ain't got nothing else to do. But that's how God teaches me. Hey. I'm not listening to myself to see what I look like. I'm trying to make sure I got it right. And every time I go and see what God says, I see something right between the verses that I was just in. Amen. Amen. So he teaches me as I teach others. Mm. And when I go back and listen to it, I... I, I, I'm saying to myself, I didn't say that, but I could hear myself say, I say, where did that come from? Hmm. Or say, the will of I. The will of I. Say, everything, everything was, created was created with a purpose. With a purpose. For a purpose. For a purpose. Hmm. Okay, all right. Lord. Well, I can see this gonna be a good this is gonna be a good one. I can tell oh, already. Oh. And I've been I've been hungry for this ever since last week. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Now, this is my thread. Anytime I'm teaching, this is where I teach from. This is my launch pad. Uh, this is the verse that God has given me for missions to men. This is actually the 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 springboard, so to speak. This is the foundational scripture, if indeed you needed one and wanted to know what we're about. But today I want to start at Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. I'm going to read down into verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. you got to say, I got it. Yeah. Uh, Brother Lord, here's what I want you to do. Close that middle door and just open up those side doors for me, please. Here in Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. you got to say, I got it. Yeah. It says, therefore, if, if, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection of mercy, 
Now, here we see the qualifiers. Everybody say the qualifiers. The qualifiers. What's the qualifiers? Uh, yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very good. Very good. That's why you got to go back. If is the qualifiers. See, if qualifies everything else that comes after this. Mm -hmm. If it's not that, it can't be that. Say, so if, if is the qualifier. Yeah. All right, now verse 2. Fulfill, watch it, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. Ho, 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 ho. Therefore, if, that's verse of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. That's pretty simple. Being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of what? How, how many minds? One, one mind. So that has to mean that like-minded and one mind is two different things. Amen. Hmm. Yeah. A whole lot of people know who God is. Okay. A whole lot of people don't serve. Hey. Amen. Okay. Uh, we'll come back and do that another time. i got to get back to the will of I. Verse number three. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests. Say interests. Interest. Say S. S. Say interests. Interest. See, 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 don't, don't just look out for me but for, for one thing. Look out for me for all my interests. Okay. Just because I'm a pastor don't mean I need tires, don't need tires on my car. Hey, amen. Look out for all our interests. Just because just cause you come here and I see you smiling don't mean that you don't need to go and get some lunch. Hey, amen. So look out for all our interests. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. See, I don't usually read this part because, you know, I like to stay with my paradigm. And, you know, but I got to do it this time because of the will of God. Who oh boy. Verse number four. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this what? Mine. Be in who? You. Which was also in who else? Christ. Christ Jesus. Very good. Now, I got to do this tonight because I'm going to put my left hand up. You're going to say Christ. I'm going to put my right hand up. You're going to say Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. Christ. Jesus. Very good. We got to slow it down in our minds in order to understand the paradigm of this. Christ is always spirit son of God. Jesus is always flesh son of man. So we have to learn how to think like Christ so that we can act like Jesus. Amen. Say Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Say Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. And when we learn to think like Christ and act like Jesus, we'll look out for each other's interests. Amen. 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 Some people want to act like Jesus, but they can't think like Christ. Uh, Amen. Say the will of I. The will of I. Say the will of I. The will of I. But that's the reason why, because you're I. It's just, it's just I. Oh, amen. I, I, I. Yeah, say, say the will of I. The will of I. Okay, very good, very good, very good. Okay, now let me go to my notes now. Now I'm ready. Whew, that was pretty good. I like that already. Now, we're talking about of my mind, in my mind, and the subtopic here that we're teaching on today is the will of I. So first off, let's turn to the first verse I want to go to. It's going to be in the book of Genesis, I believe. That's it. Genesis chapter 2. Because I want to show you what I meant by everything has a purpose for a purpose. Here in Genesis chapter 2, verse number 18. Genesis chapter number 2, verse 18. Now, this is really just a little bit of review. I want to catch us all up to before I jump off the bridge again this evening. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And remember now... When we read Genesis chapter 1, it talks about God, Elohim. When we read Genesis chapter 2, it's talking about the Christ, the Messiah. Everybody with me? Okay. Now, I don't want to go teach on that. If you have any questions, you can email me at info at missionsdemen.org right now, and I'll try to respond to you in the next couple of days. If I don't get back to you, that means your question was crazy. <laughs> here we go. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. It says here, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I what? Will. I what? I will. 
I what? Will. Will. So now we see the character of the Lord God. We see the will attached to an I. Say the will, the the will, will of I. I. See, and right now we have to understand that I believe by way of the Holy Spirit and how God had this structure by Genesis being the book of the beginnings, we see right away that this is the first time in the Bible that you see I attached to a will. That this verse, you won't see it in Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, because God is who he is, he don't need to say I. He just start talking stuff. Because everything was created for a purpose. And he's the one who created it. So he don't say I. Hmm. That that would be rhetorical and redundant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do I need to say I when it's I doing it? And, and everything I'm doing is because I did it. It wasn't there before it got up. So I have to say I. Right. Amen. It's like if I go home and eggs are already cooked, I don't have to cook the egg. I just eat it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I say I cook it. I don't have to say that. I just eat the thing. Mm -hmm. Simple. Simple. The same way God created. God created everything. Yeah. And everything has a purpose. So that means he doesn't have to say I. Here in Genesis chapter 2, we see that the Lord God now shows us the character of God. And his I is attached to the will of God. He says, I will make man. I will make man a helper. I, he's showing what he can do. Before that, he ain't got to say what he can do. He just did it. Because there was nothing there. But now stuff is here. So now... Now, now everything out there that has an eye is waiting for a will to be attached to it. Or else it don't work. Hmm. Now I'm going to stretch you because I was stretched too. I'm going to tell you that right now. Let me just tell you something personal. Uh, two, three weeks ago, it's not that, uh, how did I say this, Father? Because I don't want to sound like I'm begging. Because the word says that if I'm his child, I ain't got to beg for that. Mm -hmm. Just say it. Just say it. Okay, I'm going to just say it then. Listen. My wife and I, we believe in God to pay our house off. Okay. So we, we put a lot in one area, like, all the time. But then I realized, well, wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. Well, you know, you had your teeth done and you had this stuff and insurance just don't pay for everything. I don't care how good your insurance is. And I don't understand this thing no more. You get these bills in the mail. No, you get these bills in the mail. No, you pay. You pay. You paying your deductible. You paying your premium, and you still get a bill in the mail. I'm like, what am I paying for? In my mind. Now, in my mind. In my mind. Now, somebody's gonna help me run out, but in my mind. So I had to take some. Not take, but I used some money that we're using to travel because I'm getting ready to have a grandson. So we're gonna have to travel when the grand boy show. And I had to use that money for that. And I'm thinking, huh? I'm like, in my in my mind, I didn't flinch. But I did take a thought. Amen. Amen. Just for a quick minute. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, I said, you know what? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Now I'm teaching too much. I'm saying I can have stuff now. I, everything belongs to me. You know, uh, of my mind, in my mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I stopped. And I said, no. In Jesus' name. Because everything belongs to me. And I understand that all I have to do is be able to see what God says. And I can have what he said. I began to see what I needed. Mm -hmm. And I stuck in, and I understand this term now, putting pressure on God's word. Mm -hmm. What you don't do is stop doing what you were doing before if you ain't got what you're supposed to have. Amen. Amen. Say, put pressure on. Put pressure on. I, I, was, I went out and bought my wife two pair of shoes. I sure did. Amen. I put pressure on this thing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to make it look like I didn't have enough. You follow me? Amen. That's putting pressure on. Now don't be don't be stupid. Don't go buy a car. Ain't what I'm talking about. Don't do that. Ain't, don't be stupid. But you can't flinch like you ain't got enough. Right. Amen. And I mean, no sooner that I did that, the rest just showed up. I say, mm, I know how this works now. Amen. Because everything is waiting that has an eye for a will to be attached to it. Amen. I have some money that's waiting for my will to attach to it. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm 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 stretch you, brother. I'm gonna stretch you. When you understand how this works, see, 
Yes, we have to pay bills. I get that. Mm -hmm. But you have to learn the will of I. That if God is your father, that everything belongs to you. Amen. Healing belongs to you. Wealth belongs to you. Good food belongs to you. The whatever it is, you it belongs to. You. It's just waiting for your for 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 the will to attach to your eye. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yes. Amen. Um, sometimes Good. criminals understand this, though. I mean, real, real, showing sure up so like criminals, they understand this. They go take their stuff. <laughs> Amen. They attach their eye to that will. They go take it. And we as believers, oh, God's going to. No. It says you got to take it by force. Amen. Now, that's what the words say. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that. Now, don't go out and break the law. They say do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, using, I'm using comparison. I'm using comparison here now. Don't go out and break the law. What pastor said, I'm going to rob a bank. You crazy. You crazy. No, stay with me now. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. No, brothers, take up. Say, see, that's why I have to teach you on our mind. I have to help us with our mind. Here we go. God design of creation has a built-in resolve. God's design for your creation has a built-in resolve. Everything was created for a purpose and with a purpose. It has a resolve. Everything that God created has a resolve. Amen. Everything that God designed in creation has a built-in resolve that God gave because it is the base, basis of being able or having the ability for creation to use both God's spoken word and his written word. In other words, everything God created works off his word. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now, you might not have known that, but everything God created works off his word. Because everything has a built-in resolve, and since he'd have to say, I, it is his word. Everything that God created works off his word. Amen. Amen. And if you're his child, you need to work off his word, too. Amen. Amen. Say the will of I. The will of I. Okay, we almost there, y'all. We almost there. We almost there. Almost there. All of what we as mankind have need of has already been provided. We have the steering wheel of our life to drive with God's word. Hmm. Amen. We have that ability because we all have an eye. Amen. And all we have to do is get God's will attached to our eye. Hmm. Everybody say the will of I. The will of I. Now I'm going to go in now and define what the I is. Say, 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 I am a spirit. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I have a soul. And both of those, and both of those live in my body. Live in my body. My, my spirit, my spirit is, who I am. is who I am. My soul, my soul is, how I think. is how I think. My body, my body is how I act. How I act. My spirit, my spirit is my character. Is my, character. my soul, my soul is my crazy. Is my, crazy. <laughs> my body, my body is, clumsy. is clumsy. Amen. Because it's not perfect. Amen. Amen. Stay. Oh, well, who you calling that? Come, you fool. Amen. <laughs> If our bodies were perfect, oh, cold bullshit. Mm -hmm. If our bodies were perfect, they'd never be able to sin. Amen. That's a fact. That's why they're clumsy. Mm -hmm. They're waiting to be told what to do. Amen. That's like a kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Say the will, the will of I. Of I. Okay, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Now, just stay, stay with me, fellas. I got to stretch you. I really got to stretch you. I got to stretch us. I mentioned this last week, and I want to go back to it because this is pretty much how I'm going to put this together. When it comes to relationships, especially husband and wife relationships, I mentioned that when we get to the place of saying, I don't love a person, 
What I'm saying is that I don't want to assume responsibility for their faults. Because if I love a person like God loves me, mm -hmm. I assume responsibility of their I. Amen. Amen. That means all their faults, their mm -hmm. blemishes, their bumps, their knocks. If I love them, I have to take it all, else I don't love them. When it says that the, the husband's body is not his own and the wife's body is not hers, if I don't take ownership of that body, it don't not be mine. Amen. Amen. That means I got to take it with everything that it comes with. Amen. The Amen. crazy and the clumsy. Amen. Amen. Say the will of I. Okay, we're going to get there. <laughs> you know, you got to understand how this works. Because everything has an eye and is waiting for a will attached to it. Amen. And we have to decide, oh, we have to decide if we're going to assume the responsibility of the will of sin hmm. or the will of God. Because mm -hmm. everything is waiting for an eye and the will to be attached to it. Because God put this in motion from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Everything is created for a purpose and with a purpose. And it's just waiting for I. Anytime we speak or enunciate the word I into the atmosphere, there's a will out there waiting to attach to that I. Mm -hmm. oh, amen. amen. When I say that I am the redeemed of the Lord, mm -hmm. the will of redemption attaches it to, to my I. Amen. When I say I'm healed and not sick, the will of healing attaches to my I. Amen. 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 When I say I'm the head and not the tail, oh, oh, all of the resources in the kingdom are running towards my mm. eye. Amen. Mm. Mm. Now remember, you can't get too quiet on the brother. Yes, get too no. quiet on the boy. I think you don't love me something. You got to blink your eyes away. You got to do something. Amen. Okay, all right. Okay. okay. Let's, let's put some more word on this. <laughs> Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians. I think we'll post up there for the rest of the time. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. And this is where we were last week. And I want to make sure we got this down. Uh, the will of I. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. I'm going to start reading in verse number 10. And I've read this over before. Remember now, this is really talking about money. It's talking about you giving money. It's talking about money you promised to give, you didn't give. That's because you never say I. You thought it, but you didn't say it. Amen. You never said, I'm going to give this. That's not what you said. You just thought about giving, but you didn't never say, I'm going to give it. Amen. Because once you said, I'm going to give it, there's a will that attaches up to your eye. There's been people that ever say, Pastor, Pastor. Pause. pause. But come back quick. Come back quick. Now, I'm going to put this out there, and this is not a disclaimer, just a matter of fact. Uh, I'm going to ask people never to come to me again and tell me what they're going to give me, especially when it comes to the money. It's best you don't lie, because God's going to get you. And here's what I mean by that. God's not going to abuse you or anything like that, but he's going to withdraw He's going to withdraw his presence from you. <laughs> I mean, I can't count on all my fingers how many times. Oh, pastor, that just blessed me so much. I'm going to make sure we sow it to you. In fact, I'm going to give you, they even talk about the dollar amount. I ain't never seen them no more. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lying eye. Amen. And a lying will attached to that eye. Amen. Maybe they uh, had good intentions. One more, ever say, Pastor? Yeah. One more time. One more time. There's no such thing as a good, good line attention. Ever say, the real? The real? Ain't nothing like this. See, 
there again. That, that's that justifiable reason thing. That, that's why she took her mind. See, she understands. See, 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 once once you take it, oh Lord Jesus, here we go, Lord Jesus, here we go. Here we go, here we go. My, 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 my. Now I really want to get through this will of I. But now I gotta put this out there. Listen. You have to understand this, fellas. Once you take a thought and it doesn't attach itself to your will, there's a will waiting for your eye to show up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, once you take a thought, remember I teach on this stuff, once you take a thought, your imagination lights up, now you start imagining these things, your imagination is just a blank canvas that's waiting for your emotions to weigh in. Your emotions is the weight that weighs into your imagination that draws the picture, the height, the depth, the colors, the width, mm -hmm. your feelings, all that goes from your emotions into your imagination. Mm -hmm. Now once the imagination and the emotions get together, they go to your intellect to find out really the value of this thing. Mm -hmm. Your intellect adds the value to your emotions and your imagination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One plus one equals what? Two. So you add a value, that's in your intellect. See that, that's where you that's where you, that's where that's where you come to a calculated sum before you conclude it. Mm -hmm. Amen. See see when you take math, when they first teach you the basics of it, they'll teach you one plus one and then put an equal sign. Your intellect is the equal before you write the number down that attached to your will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, once attached to your will, you already said the three. The equal sign is the intellect part. The mm -hmm. intellect determines how much this really means to you, what's the value of it. You know, it, that's what your intellect does. Amen. Amen. Man, I got to bring a board. I got to bring, uh, I got to bring it back. Amen. I got to go back to some very basic stuff. We, we're way out here now. But anyway, let's keep going. So there's no such thing as, as, as good intentions, uh, lying good intentions. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure we repeat that again. So don't come up to me, oh pastor, we're gonna do this for you, and yeah, I'm gonna give you this kind of money. If you're gonna do it, just shut up and give it. Yeah, do it, amen. 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 Say, say, say the will, the will of, I. of I. Just let the will attach to your eye, just do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And stop lying. <laughs> Here we go. Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse number ten. And no, I got. I can't go. I can't live. I can't. I can't, I can't live alone. Cause see, some of y'all. <laughs> I can't leave it alone. I can't leave it alone. Cause no, see that. That's the challenge for all of us in here. See, some people got our stuff. I'm telling you, there's people who are holding our stuff. Hmm. Everything God bless you ain't for you. Amen. And if you Amen. get rid of it, God will give you some more. Amen. Amen. Don't you understand? You're stifling things, fool. Amen. You walk around with so much money, you stink. Oh. <laughs> Man, wow. Not just filter rich, you stinking rich. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. What if they forgot? They ain't forget. Everybody say, Pastor. Everybody say, Pastor. Get him out of here. Yeah. <laughs> ain't nobody forgot. No, no. Ain't, ain't nobody forgot. No, that's a, just about a reason. You, you lie to yourself long enough. Because you're going to believe you. Say the will of I. Say that lie. Attach to my eye. And I decided it was a lie. To lie. To lie. Amen. Come on back, come on back. Cool. Boy, boy, boy. Second Corinthians chapter eight, because we're talking about giving. If you go and study this Second Corinthians chapter eight, it's talking about giving. Mm -hmm. It's talking about giving. Amen. And if you don't learn how to turn your giving eye and attach a will to it, you ain't gonna never get nothing from God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, man. I was talking to a brother today. And he's telling me about, you know, all the challenges he's having and things like that. He's a believer, you know, and sold out. And, he, you know, you know, I'm like thinking, I got to get away from him. <laughs> I got to leave. I got to get away from this fool. I'm thinking those are turn. Man, man, they got wick. They got weather. Shut up. <laughs> Do something. <laughs> but see, the challenge is he held on to other people's stuff too long. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And the word of God says it will rot on the vines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. That's why some of your fruit ain't for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. And if you try holding on to it, it's going to rot on the vine. Amen. Okay. Amen. Oh, boy. That, I didn't know it was going to be like this, but I'm so glad I came. Yeah. Here we go. No. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10 says, And in this I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago. All that money you promised you were going to give Pastor last year, give it to him. Amen. I'm giving, man, listen, let me stop. I got to I gotta stop again. Being a minister of the gospel, I'm, I'm required to give. And the thing I give the most of is my time. Mm -hmm. And there's some things I know I'm not going to ever get back again. I can't, I can't even begin to tell you the time that I invest between me and God to make sure that I'm the vessel that he can use. I can't, I can't even, t I, you, you can't even get it. You can't even get it. You can't even get it. But he wants to do the same thing for everybody. Everybody. Amen. Everybody. Say the will. The will of I. Of I. Whew, boy. Verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 10. And in this I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were designed to do a year ago. Watch this. But now you also must complete, complete, complete the doing of it. That as there was a readiness to desire, like man, you were, you knew this, you knew this is the right thing. God showed you how you do this. He gonna hook you up on the other side. He showed. Ooh, come on, Lord, please. Let, let me just get through this thing. Remember, we talked about Abram and how God took him outside, and Abram was in a vision. Remember, visions mean you're aware. Yes. Okay. Amen. Dreams mean you're not aware. Amen. We all have visions. God gives you a revelation and you can see what he said. That's a vision. Amen. And you're aware of it. You say, oh, wow. Yeah, okay, wow. I can look back. Yeah, I can see it. And you see it. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you've heard the word, the, the devil comes immediately, Satan comes immediately and steals it right out your mind. Mm -hmm. So what happens, you can't hold on to the vision. Mm -hmm. So that you were desiring to do and were anxious to do it, he came and stole that thing. You can't see it. And now you go, now you start lying and you say, well, you know, that wasn't God. <laughs> I, that, that, that wasn't God. Yeah, I know. Because God, because if that was God, then he knew I was going to have to pay this bill tomorrow. That wasn't God. No, he's trying to get you more than enough money to pay the bill tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Amen, Pastor. I am talking about money. If you don't like it, I don't care. Amen. Because if you don't, if you think you don't need no money, you show no crazy. Amen. Hmm. As two bed bugs on crack. Hmm. <laughs> a dependent and a codependent. Here we go. <laughs> oh my my my. Lord, what Lord, where did this come from? Here we go. Oh boy. Let's do Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10 one more time. I've got to get to your eye. That's what we get into now. We get to your eye. Here in Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10, it says, and in this I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it. That is, that as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may be a completion out of what you have. We had a we have a, a breakfast of men the third Saturday of every month. There was one brother that bought a suitcase of money to the breakfast, man. I walked in. I thought the boys were going to stay tonight. You know, I know he was married, but I didn't see his wife. And I was going to push up on it because I thought he was going to up, tip up in the hotel over the weekend, right? So I said, I saw this case when he came in. He said, Pastor, uh, before we go, can I do one thing? This boy opened up a suitcase with full of money, man. And I'm thinking no certain terms. And he said it took him a year, two years to get all that gathered up. And in my mind, he would have to have desire to do that. Amen. And there was a will that attached itself to his eye. Mm -hmm. Amen. Man. Mm. Yes. My, 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 my. Amen. Mm. Mm. Man. Mm. Verse 11. But now, no, ver, ver, I'm sorry, verse 12. Here we go. 
For if there is first a willing what? Mind. Mind. If there is first a willing what? Mind. Mind. I'm here to convey to all of us the willing mind is your eye. Hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why God didn't have to say I'm going to create anything because it was the mind of God himself that was creating it. Mm -hmm. The willing mind is your eye. Because that determines if you're going to do it or not. Amen. And that determines whether there's going to be a will attached to your eye or not. Mm -hmm. See, you got to first have a willing mind. Amen. If you attach your will to an eye, if, if you don't do it deliberately, you're still doing it uh, kind of passively, right? Well, the Word of God says this. You don't do anything grudgingly or out of necessity. You have to be, he says, he, you have to have a willingness to do this. Absolutely. Guaranteed. Uh, okay, here we go. Everybody say, Pastor. Pastor. He started. He started. See, now, now, likewise, see, you can't act like you love your wife. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm on this wife thing. You know, I'm married, so, you know, don't play a boy. Yeah, no, no. You can't act like you love your wife. You understand me? Because she, she don't know. Amen. That's right. So even though you're doing the right, say the right thing. Right. Say go downtown. Go downtown. To the flower district. The flower district. Bring, home Bring home a big bouquet. A big bouquet. 20 rolls. 20 rolls. Now you didn't pay for $5 for them. You didn't pay for $5 for them. <laughs> no, let me say, no, and then you walk in like you the man. Yeah. Ain't spent for $5. Uh, <laughs> Now, now, here we go. Now, somebody say, isn't it a thought? That's the problem. <laughs> the thought problem. <laughs> say, say, my eye my is not the thought. My eye is the willing mind, not the thought. Not the thought. Here we go. That, here we go. I, I gotta, I, I'm going to have to bring my board down. i got to show you all this. i got to show you all this. See, remember, the thought will come, but you got to have a willing mind. The willing mind is the eye. And based off of the willing mind will determine what will attaches up to that. A weak will, lethargic will, have done will, don't care will. Because <laughs> every time I comes out, there's a will waiting to attach to it. Mm. That's good. Okay. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every time. Every time. Mm -hmm. I can't have a willing mind just to love my wife just cause I came home and she cooked dinner for me. Amen. I gotta have a willing mind to love my wife if I come home and the house tore up. Amen. <laughs> and I've been working all day. Ain't no dinner. And guess what? Ain't no good night time either. <laughs> I say, Pastor, this is a Ms. Bible set. We got to know where we live, fellas. It's not going to say this thing. You want to say this thing? <laughs> no, you ain't got no lights. We use the candles. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Oh, my, 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 my. Now, now, listen, fellas. I'm telling you. Now, this is how God deals with me. And when I read his word, I'll be trying to figure stuff out. And he tells me, say, no, like he did. Like I said, what you mean? He said, no, you weren't willing to do that. I said, what? He said, no, you weren't. He said, you did it, but you weren't willing. Because uh, he knows you. Amen. Yeah, he right. knows me, but my eye wasn't attached to it. Right. That's, right. Mm -hmm. That's the point here. Mm -hmm. And if there's no eye, no will can attach to it. You'll go through motions. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Amen. Okay. <laughs> no, you'll go through motions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's, if there's not first a willing mind, there's no eye. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm. Does everybody understand me? Amen. Okay, let's keep going. Let's go a little bit farther. Let's go a little bit farther. Let's go a little bit farther. Fun night. Woo! My, 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 my. Here we go. Let's keep going. Watch this now. Verse number 12. For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. That's why if you ain't got no money, the house tore up, the roof off. It ain't about what you don't have. The willing mind is what you have. Amen. 
So based off you having a willing mind, you can attach a will to it to get what you want. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, yeah. Jesus, please. I know I, some things I just can't say no more. Well, I can, but I got to make sure I get it right because I don't know who's watching this and who's listening. And I don't want to offend nobody because I know that just so y'all know, their sister's watching this now just so y'all know. Amen. Oh, Amen. Anyway, watch it, watch it. Watch this now. Say first, first. A, willing mind. a willing mind. Like the first time you met that girl that you first had an intimate relationship with, you had a willing mind. Amen. Amen. And your eye got attached to a wheel. Amen. Amen. And you didn't stop <laughs> until you satisfied your eye. Oh, amen. <laughs> yes, Lord. Am I right? And you're right. right. Come back. Everybody, 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 everybody with me? Everybody understand me? Everybody understand me. I want to make sure we're straight now. I want to make sure we're straight. I want to make sure we got this thing. Yeah. Okay? That's because you had a willing mind first. Yes. Amen. And as soon as you had the willing mind, everything else attached to that. Yeah. It just moved, just like almost automatic. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> it, didn't even it, did, it did not even take no $5 bunch of roses. Amen. Because once you had the will in mind, your will is now set to influence the environment because it is the will of God that produces everything. Oh, God, mm -hmm. bullshit. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. Ah, he set this thing in motion, y'all. Mm -hmm. He set it in motion. And when you know how it works, everything that belongs to you, you can get it, man. You can get it. Mm -hmm. You know how this thing works like this. Mm hmm Boy, the use of our willing allow, allows us to drive the promises of God through our lives. God requires both our permission and our participation of our will in order for His will to be done in our life. Amen. Not just see, see. There, there's those that have taught this, and I love the teaching because I use it. They say God needs both your permission and your participation, but He needs the per permission and participation of your will. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because some people just go through motions. Amen. They don't have a will in mind at all. Mm -hmm. That's why G. Uh, we're going to get there. We'll get there in a minute. Huh? I got a few minutes. I got a few minutes. That's going to be the end of it. Here we go. Watch this. But well, let me read this again. The use of our willing allows us to drive the promises of God through our lives. In other words, when we first have a willing mind to serve God, there is nothing that can't get from him through us or get from him to us through us. Because God only attaches himself to the ownership of what he owns. And in order for God to own our will, we have to give our will to him, and he assumes responsibility if he owns our will. So no longer is it our will, but his will. Mm -hmm. Pastor, is that what Jesus said? Nevertheless, not. Uh, uh, we don't get there. We don't get there. We don't get there. We go. I, I got. I got to take it to the process. We can't get there yet. I'm a sure to you. I'm gonna show it to you. See, when I teach it like this, when I teach it like this, fellas, that's why I wanted to see. The eye is your willing mind. Okay. Yeah. Say first. 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 Not second. Not, Not second. second. Not third. Not third. It said at first there's a willing mind. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't have a willing mind first. You just have the attitude just to, okay. You know? Amen. And you want God to bless you. Mm -hmm. Like you're doing him a favor. Right, yeah. Boy. So, Pastor, is that when people, is that the same thing when people say, well, if God will? Man. Yeah. Boy, I heard that a lot. Man, no. In fact, there's a lot of people, and, and very, you're right, there's a lot of people that use these cliches. Uh, if God will it. What? <laughs> That's crazy. Well, well, say what? Well, you know, well, Pastor, I'll see you next week. If God will it. What? Uh -huh. In my mind. Now, listen, if you do that, please, don't, 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 don't be mad at the boy. I'm just telling you. 
God's always willing. Mm -hmm. You got to be willing first. Amen. That's what, that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. It first was a willing mind. See, really what you're saying is that you're not willing and you're trying to blame something on God. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. And people get used to that. You know, you, you're not even willing to do what God said you do. So, you know, you know, I ask people, oh, well, come on out to the Bible study. If God will, what? What? Justifiable reason. Justifiable reason. Just say, well, you know, Pastor, I can't make it. Right. I right. desire to be there, but I just, I'm not going to lie. I can't make it. Right. In fact, I don't even want to come. Just tell the truth. Yeah, that's a willing, that's first being a willing mind. Yeah. Now, God can help a brother out when you do it like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just say it, just say it. Come on. Yeah, just say just say I ain't coming. It's okay. That's having a willing mind first. Okay, I'm almost there. Watch this. Here we go. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's go over to Luke chapter 22. Let's finish here. Let's go here. Luke chapter 22. My, 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 my. And thank y'all so much for coming out this evening. I tell you, I, I, I have been wound up, man. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, Luke 22. I mean, the devil understands how to work the environment. But what he does not understand is that my revelation from my father now, I heard a pastor teach about it's just a win and it don't matter. <laughs> it's just a win. Amen. And it don't even matter. Amen. I'm going to come back and teach on calming the storms in your mind. I left off about five years ago, and I'm going to come back and teach on calming the storms in your mind. Amen. Okay. Say so it's just a win. It's a win. And it don't even matter. It don't even matter. Amen. That's it. Watch it. Watch it. Luke chapter 22, verse number 39. You got to say, I got it. Yeah. It says here, now this is Jesus. It says here, coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed. Say a custom. Accustomed. Now, in order for to say a custom, this is something he does. Mm -hmm. Say, first a willing mind. First, first a willing mind. See, some of our customs is based off what we're willing to do. Amen. Amen. Everybody Amen. with me? Amen. It says here, coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed. And his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, watch this, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven and strengthened him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Mm. Mm. Here we see in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, it says, Father, if it is whose will, your will, the first thing Jesus does is qualify this thing. If is the qualifier. He qualifies it first. Because if does not mean God's ability to perform if it's his ability to believe God will perform. Amen. He qualifies it with if. Mm -hmm. And then he says, if it is your will, say your will. Your will. Right here, he gives his will away. He actually says, Father, own my will. Because you love me so much, I'm giving you my will. I'm giving you my will. So now God takes ownership and commits to his will. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because no longer is his will his will, his will is God's will. No longer is my wife's body her body, it's my body because I've taken ownership of all the imperfections, all the knots, all the brick. Same way with Jesus, same way with Jesus, same way with Jesus. Man. Because it says in verse 44, being in agony, that means there's some things going on in his mind. Yes, yes. Amen. Ah, And he gave ownership of his will to God. And God accepted it as it was. Amen. Because he first had a willing mind. Mm -hmm. His eye 
was contingent on the if. Mm -hmm. Mm. Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my what? Will. will. Not my what? Will. 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 But yours be done. So when he relinquishes his will, He's in agony between his imagination, his emotions, and his intellect not having the ability to become the dominant influence in his mind to attach himself to his will because he no longer owns it. He has a willing mind first. Mm -hmm. The first thing he does, he identifies he needs to talk to the Father because if there's first a willing mind, yes. Yes. Amen. you're going to seek those things which are above and not those things on earth. Oh. So now because he gives his will away, there's nothing in his mind that has a place to attach the dominant influence of his thoughts to no more. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any thought you take once it becomes a dominant influence in your mind, it attaches up to your will, then you act out what you're thinking about. But he's in agony because there's no place for this thought to take root because he don't own his will no more. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Mm. Man. That's mm. So he gave up his will. That's, that's it. That's it. Not mine, but yours. Mm -hmm. He gave up the possibility of doing something on earth that would not be pleasing to the Father. Amen. Right. And you can't do anything if it don't attach to your will first. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Thank you so much for taking your time to spend this time here with us at Missions to Men. I trust this message has blessed you in some shape, form, or fashion. Listen, if it didn't, it ain't my fault. I just said, you know, I just put it out there. Let God do what he's going to do. Say the will, the will of, I. of I. Now, before we leave here, i got to give you some opportunities to get involved with us. Listen, it's not enough for you to come and hear this word. You've already heard about Church Box from the beginning. I'm going to make this appeal to you again. Go to churchbox.com. Sign up. Use the code M2M. That way we know who we're going to send this to. You will get information from Mrs. Demand every month that will be spiritual resources for your, there will be resources for your spiritual development and growth. I appreciate you and you're important to me. I want to give you some quality resources. Amen. Also, if you are here and you want to give to Mrs. Demand directly, listen, you can send your gift of love to P.O. Box 93478 in the City of Industry, California. Mrs. Demand, P.O. Box 93478 in the city of industry, California, 91715. Also, from your banking applications, you can email any gift of love, monetary gift, from your bank to Mrs. Demand. Just email it to info at missionsdemand.org and tag it missions to men. That's what you're giving, going to give to. We'll receive it with great gratefulness and thanksgiving. Trust me, we need your support. Everybody repeat this after me say a different future. It's possible for me if I'm willing to change my mind. A different future is possible for me if I'm willing to change my mind. Because the thoughts I take will determine the decisions I make. And my decision, say my decision. Say first the will and my decisions. Say my decisions will define my destiny. Change my mind. And until we're together again, we're here every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at 8722 Crenshaw Boulevard. So if you're in the city of L.A., L.A. County anyway, come, come on in and join us. But pick it up by streaming next week. And until we're together again, remember these words.